Welcome to the 2021 Economic Depression and Preparation Channel. I'm your host, Tony, bringing you the latest updates here for this afternoon for January, I mean, July 20th, 2021 here as we head to the end of July almost. It's crazy to think a lot has happened today. Please be sure to subscribe to this channel. I appreciate your support. And also, um, this is very interesting because we're having these snapback reactions with the market. Yesterday, the market was down over 700 points. Today, the market miraculously does a little dead cat dead cat bounce and is up by three over 300 points today as of this afternoon but builders are pulling back as more home buyers are priced out of the market the whole the housing market is cooling down as we predicted it would and um hedge funds are buying up more and more of these subdivisions these homes residential single family homes constructions by kb homes is shown under construction in valley center california here in the photo but uh building permits are down Mortgage applications are down, mortgage rates are up, um, inflation is up, but we expect that to be temporary. But at this point, who's going to buy a house when they're worried about, you know, the job stability and the family stability and this fa this economy, this world economy? So I think the starts are going to be going down toward the late summer and fall. And especially with single family homes, maybe townhomes, maybe condominiums, maybe rental properties, maybe still steady, hold steady. But the rest of the market looks to be um, heading down. The average loan amount and hit another record at three hundred ninety two thousand three hundred seventy dollars. So the price of these homes are going up. Like I said, the average price of a single family home nationwide is at three sixty one thirty. And they're taking the average loan amount, as you can see, is 392, uh, 370. So if you have a home, be thankful to God that you do. Um, and if it's paid off, even better. Um, and because, you know, you can you can you can rent it out of Airbnb if you want to do something like that or, you know, make money other ways to help offset the property taxes and other things that you may have up maintenance or other upkeep that you may have to do remodeling or something like that. Um, but also White House expects Biden expects uh president biden says congress will raise the vote the debt limit as i tell you before they always go into this um debt limit crisis every presidential term and there's no reason why i think they, they were not going to raise the debt limit they're going to raise the debt limit um because they we have to to be able to keep spending for this infrastructure bill and other bills that need to be passed but the bad part about it is you know like i said what goes up eventually must come down and that's the same thing for this market and so right now the market's just kind of feeling around but the prices today with the dow stock uh the dow jones tanking yesterday and then coming back with a little weak cat bounce um based on they say here ibm and hca healthcare rally on earnings uh netflix and chipotle set the report you know i was surprised to see chipotle stock over um over seven hundred dollars eight hundred dollars a share or higher like that i was like wow burritos are really high in the stock market but i guess apparently people are paying for burritos so those the stock chipotle stock is very high for a, a fast food type of venture and so uh but this is part of the reason why the market is going to be correcting by over 45 percent it's because of companies like that that's very high overvalued very high and over leveraged it's higher than netflix the stock of chipotle is higher than netflix it's one stock it's crazy so that's why the Dow Jones is going to be taking a big correction, ladies and gentlemen, because it's not just in these healthcare sectors or retail or fast food or financial sectors or the blue chip sectors or technology sectors. It's every sector of the market that is overrated, overvalued, and um, it's going to do for a correction. And so, and you know something too, I want to, I want to tell you something too also, the 10-year yield went up a little bit but it's actually fallen it's now below 1.2 percent that means that what we're going to see is hyperinflation in the short term ladies and gentlemen but then in the long term we're going to see a massive deflation remember the 1929 crisis was a massive deflationary crisis but it's just that this time the inf the hyperinflation and inflation we're seeing is allowing the top one percent to go ahead and buy up all the assets become stronger monopoly monopolize everything get rid of all the small businesses and chains monop and you know for control and then once they buy up everything they'll drop the prices and everything go down but the problem is nobody's going to have any cash or liquidity to be able to buy these items and then along with the supply chain crunch that we that is going to be in full effect after 2022 the supply chain is going to crumble and you know what goods and services that you didn't get like now and before then it's not going to be available or it's going to take six or seven months for you to get a basic item like say an air conditioner or a um 
or, or, or a refrigerator or anything or furniture they're gonna tell you oh sorry uh at the store you go there and they said we have to order it but we're back order it's gonna take six to months to a year or two years and by then the need will be over you know you won't need it anymore after, after that long so continue to prepare i just wanted to give you this brief update on the market conditions and what's happening and like we said this was this is what i predicted this was happening right now and so people some people some i want to say this too as well some of the other economic channels have been saying that we're heading into a stagflation scenario i don't think so we're going from straight from the hyperinflation or the inflation that we're seeing now to a massive deflationary crisis and um that's going to be evident by the bond yields that are going, going to be falling tremendously and everything else is going to be falling because all of the stimulus is gone remember we're not getting any more 1200 checks the rent uh, moratorium and all that's going to be ending soon probably in september and october and once all that ends there's no more velocity money velocity to be spent out there for for us as americans to spend money so that's and, and three-fourths of the economy is based on spent spending money at least the american economy so continue to prepare be blessed, and I'll talk to you very soon. Thank you for listening.